Durka in three words would be deadly. Durka, this is his domain! Oh, Durka! Passionate. If I do it once, I want to do it twice, and then three times, and do it as many times as possible. I want to cement myself as one of the best duelists. Mechanic. The most kills anyone has ever dropped in a trial. I play on Soba, they like drop 30. The second map, and drop like 40. We will do something that no other team will do. My name is Nikita Sirmitev, also known as Derke, and I play Duelist for Fnatic. Chronicle is the first one to land a shot. Derke going in for a little bit more! So now they've brought one in, maybe this will be the difference, mate. Oh, oh, oh Derke! <laughs> Wide a swing, and the gun's rain, but oh my god! Find Stags gets the follow-up. No oh, way, Derke! Derke, the adjustment is unbelievable! I think I started playing games when I was like four or five. First games were like Quake, Counter-Strike 1.6, I mean, my dad kind of like introduced it to me and I also was playing with my big brother. Because my parents are Russian and I used to speak Russian my whole life, so I was like, I was good uh, in Finnish too, but mostly in Russian. I was born in Helsinki, uh, grew up in Wanta my whole life. In Wanta, Helsinki, I think like, we have the you know, like the biggest tournaments in Finland or even ESPO, there's like Edison Masters that Fnatic won last year. I think a lot of players in Finnish Counter-Strike were mostly from Vanta, ESPO and Helsinki because they're like really close together. I don't really hang out, I'm not that kind of type. I just like to chill, watch series, watch movies. Rarely I go out, I'm kind of more introverted. Like I, I like quiet spaces through my teammates and people around me. Know that when it's like really loud and there's a lot of people, I kind of shut down or like, it's a bit hard for me. Like I can kind of get like a sensory overload and then I'm gonna be like, I had enough, I need to go out which I had uh, too many times. When I tell that to many people, they say, oh, how are you playing on stage? Well, it feels a bit different on stage. Do you think there'll be a jerk in the air along the wall in there? No, I hope not. You hope not? No. I mean, I don't like having my face blown up on some billboard or like uh, other images. I, I just want to play and that's it. I didn't really have that big aspiration to like become a pro player. I did it to become better and kind of like be good at playing games. I have parents who will not let me do that until I get a degree. So I was focusing on that first. He doesn't care what the people think, but he wants to think and he wants his teammates to think and he wants his enemies to think that, oh no, Dirk is here. He's going to be pretty scary. And that's why he's so aggressive. And that's why you don't see much doubt in his playmaking. Oh my God. <laughs> started playing Counter-Strike after I reached like global, you go face it. Of course you want to go FPL because that's where the best players are. You can make a hub and you could go from that hub, start to get into like FPLC or FPL qualifiers. So actually I think it was my second or first season playing there where I won that. Some players inside the hub were like, oh he's cheating, no way. He He's like there, or he needs to come to land. But after I got that first place, I got invited to a like, semi-decent team in Finland. We qualified to like first land. My older brother had to drive me there. We got knocked down like 0-2, easily went back home to our ride in the same day. So I was like, uh, I bit tilted and sad from that. And we qualified to another land, which was in Helsinki. First game we get is against Enns. We got beaten really hard in our first game. 16-4, completely outclassed in every single area of the game by NC Sports. They were the best team, so you don't really feel bad about it. Second game is against the Ampis team, Super Jimmy. And we lose too, we did a bit better. We lost that tournament, got out. I was still happy that we qualified. Our team kind of like disbanded. And then a month later, Doto, he had a new team, then messages me. And he was like, oh, they want to come trial for us. Like we're making a team and we might get an org. And that was like for Kova. My brother, Igor, uh, played like a really important role in my life. He's like four years older than me, so Felt really important that he could like support me, tell my parents like, oh, this actual thing, and also like drive me to lands when I want to compete. Having an older brother is super impactful. Just having someone older than you that you can look up to and you can trust fully and that you know would have like the best intentions for you is super nice. And 
from what I gather from Durka's brother, I think I've seen him like three times now. He always seems very calm, very polite, very kind. At the Red Bull in Japan, we had like our mini vacation, walked everywhere, and then he also watched like us play and also win, which was a good moment for both of us. I think if Durka didn't have his brothers or family or anyone that he could have the support system with, he'd have a lot of a rough time dealing with the stuff he's had to deal with whilst being a pro, that's for sure. Whenever I had like t troubles, like deciding, he will always help me or give me a good advice. There was one clutch that Jake did and I was like, that's my idea, and then he went, that's my brother's idea. <laughs> Thank you, Dirk's brother. The door's wide open. Do they want to go down through the door? Or move up through the one that's already open? The top of the short. Oh, Dirk hey! is just popping off. He's popping their heads. They were too focused on short. He's aced the pistol round. They acted like it's not like they thought that they're going to hit cops. 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 That's when I also told my parents, oh, I don't need any money every month. I can just play in this and get like my own money, which was really good for a teenager, like 15, 16. I don't think it interrupt like school where I was. I wanted to go like game design, but they put me into web design because I didn't get enough points on ninth grade. But I got into web design and I was like, it's fine, I'll just do this. At first it actually was kind of fun. We're at the Senet Square in Helsinki. I like it here, especially the central Helsinki. Really quiet, peaceful, really clean. This was like a nice place just to chill or someone that's come with friends or with my brother. His first scene, outside of like Dota and CS, probably non-existent. Finns don't really watch much Valorant because everyone grew up kind of like CS and the uh, famous CS players that we have in Finland. So majority of them watching CS now, but I think later on, a lot of people will start watching Valorant too. Do you agree that this is the happiest country on earth? I can see why it's ranked happiest country. You kind of have everything, it's easy to live here. Um, a lot of kind of like opportunities, nice to live, good quality of life, but uh, to say like the happiest, it's like I can never judge that. At some point in Kova, I think we won like three Finnish tournaments in a row and then I was like, didn't really feel like playing, I was like really burned out because I was playing like 16 hours a day. I kind of felt like, oh, I still need to finish the degree because I feel like it's a good thing to have like a safety pillow so I don't feel like stressed at any moment. I got the interest into Valorant when it first got teased as a Project A, I think. I remember we were in the hotel and the trailer came out and Half of the team was like, oh, this is ass. Uh, half of the team was like, oh, this actually looks pretty nice during beta. I didn't like it because the game felt really unfinished. And I didn't like the gunplay and movement, it felt so clunky at that point. My brother was like, oh, Warren came out now. Do you want to try it? I was like, I don't really like it, but let's go. Because I want to play with my brother, but in CS, it was like, I like to play face where as he doesn't care and he wants to just play matchmaking. But then Warren felt like I can take that game casually chill with my brother. The first day we play, I'm like, oh, this game actually got better. I think it was more fun because you had to learn a lot because there's so much depth in the game because of the abilities, different maps. Everyone came from like different titles, not only CS. It felt kind of like really fresh and really exciting to see what it ends up being like. I also got like a message from Kojo, like, hey, do you want to like come trial for us? I played two maps, first was Haven, I play on Soba and I do really good, I like drop 30 and I was like, I didn't really play Soba that much. And then second map, I think Mini tells me, oh, can you go like Jet and try Jet and drop like 40. That's the most kills anyone has ever dropped in a trial, even up until today. And we've trialed Leo, we've trialed Chronicle, like we've trialed really, really good players. And we are like, oh my goodness, like this is what it's like to have a, a superstar player on our team. He's kind of known as the king of Icebox and that all started on a trial in like March of 2021 against BBL. I just love that map. Ever since it came out, I used to play it like crazy. Had always good impact on it, knew how to play on jet. There's like tricks that you can do on any other agent. And it felt like more skill-based aiming map. Yeah, I miss it a lot. F***ing easy! They messaged me kind of like shortly after, calling that, hey, like, we actually want to take you. Pro players were even like, when in the game I changed my tag, they were like, oh, that actually looks clean. Professionalism in Fnatic was like, 
fully different because other orgs were like working differently because they're like low budget tiers, so it's like air is more connected while in Fnatic is like they have different departments so we're gonna send you this and this or so we're gonna give you this now you're gonna fly out to Budka and it was like probably my first flights alone Boss was like really positive as he is always I know like some people are always messaging or like saying oh he's cringe but it's like I would say he's a nicely way cringe. Like you can be around him and have a lot of fun and it's not going to be like disturbing or awkward. Dirk is a, a, a pleasure to, to be a teammate with. You know, he's super caring and I think he cares a lot about um, his teammates. I don't call many people my friend, but I consider Dirk a friend. With addition of Leon Chronicle, I think we actually got the puzzle right. Whereas with other teammates, we felt like we had good pieces, but they just don't match well. With Durka, he was the first of like the other boys, the non IGL boys, that we were like, okay, this is a superstar level player that can be one of those players that gets us to international finals. It feels like we're all really good friends, we talk to each other a lot and it's like we have so much fun together. He kind of thinks of us as like his brothers in the team um, and he's very caring, that's for sure. Everyone's good at the game, like everyone loves playing the game, everyone wants to be better and nobody gets hurt if somebody gets like a bit criticized or like corrected in some situations. Looking back at it, like our first event lock in. We go into first game and we win against Sentinels. That's where we felt like, oh, we could actually win this. We were playing so good. That event we did like super productive pracks. We play actually super good after pracking so much. I just love in lock in where he's just shushing the crowd, like when we started the comeback. We went to Tokyo, everyone wants to win now, everyone's more hungry for a, another trophy that nobody has done before, like back to back international. We win that, we're still hungry for a third one, but we played so much. Some people felt the burnout, some people played too much, some of us haven't seen families for a long time. Some people were like, why doesn't Fnatic change comms? And we're like, we don't have time. At Champs it felt like people started knowing how we play. It felt like other teams had more time to prepare change comps and kind of surprise us. And we were also kind of tired to kind of adapt to it after the loss. It didn't really feel like we made a disappointment. It felt like Loud was a really good team and on that day they were better than us. Probably for the best we didn't win. Next year would have been a shambles otherwise. It is what it is. We need to learn. They prepared something that is really annoying to play against. Like it's, it was insane. Now we learn how to play against those styles, like Loud did. I feel like coming to the next season, we'll be more prepared. We'll know what to do more. I think a lot of players, when it comes to crunch time, they're a bit more scared to do things or they might doubt themselves or they might second think themselves. And I feel like Durka doesn't really have a moment of hesitation. I don't think it's any natural ability. I think hardworking person will get further than a talented one. Everyone in the team is hardworking person, so am I. We will do something that no other team will do. Qualify to each event and win each event because Last year we qualified to everything, but we won two, and now we want to, like, I want to win three. If I do it once, I want to do it twice, and then three times, and do it as many times as possible. I want to cement myself as one of the best duelists. If we're playing against EG, he wants to show Demon One that he's the best jet. If we're playing against whoever, and there's talk about, oh, this jet might be better than you, he definitely takes it personally, and he definitely wants to shut it down. He has that fiery nature where he just wants to be the best at his role. Wait for it, it's seconds away. One kill, no, oh. another, and it's Angel gone. He's gonna try to get it halfway, but then Durka swings. I've been in majority of the events, and I've been top of the list of duelists. Always doing good, so I'm super proud of that, and I hope I will just continue doing that next year and the year after that. I think if he keeps working the way he is, like he'll have that legacy of being like one of the most consistent players of all time. With how he's been building his brand, I think he'll also be seen as like a player that people enjoy 
engaging with and watching his content. Truth be told, if we didn't pick up Durka, I don't think we would have got to the point that we are at today, honestly. He's my longest ever teammate now, except for since Mystic's gone. And so, and I think we've still got a couple more years left in us, as long as we stay driven. Just very grateful that he, that he put his trust in us and glad that we put our trust in him. So, thank you, Durka. We really have a perfect team right now. Our biggest enemy is ourselves. Sometimes we do mistakes that everyone does. By pushing myself, I know I will push them to become better too. If we're able to get really disciplined and play to our strengths all the time, and everyone's gonna be in form, I feel like we're still gonna be the best team and we're gonna be even better than in 2023. We've had quite a few losses, so to be able to start a winning streak now with him is worth the wait and worth the struggle and worth the grind. So let's win some more, shall we, Darko?